Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to FX021. So in this lesson I'm going to teach you how to make the fire on the mummy. So let's get started. So first thing we want to uh, generate some particles on the mummy. Uh, uh, so this is going to be the, this particle going to be the source of our fire. So yeah. And then we're using these particles to uh, to meet our fire. So yeah, that's what I gotta cover in this lesson. So how do we generate this particle that flowing on the mummy? Uh, we gonna create a volume velocity field around around him. So there are several ways to do it. So I'm gonna show you one of the way. Um, so first thing, import the uh, animation here, and uh, I just delete some uh, 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 material paths and uh, some attribute here, so they, so it doesn't have any material on them because uh, particle gonna inherit these uh, uh, attributes, so I don't want it, so I just delete it, and. Uh, after we do the particle simulation, we are gonna uh, like before point deform it, so uh, you can see it's uh, working with this particle, and then the particle are moving uh, around his body. So, and make sure you import the uh, model that's that's the original model, not the one with the bandage, because uh, that's too heavy to calculate. So what we do here is uh, delete our attribute and, uh, and time shift. Uh, so it's at the first frame, which is the T pose here. And uh, we we want to create a volume velocity around him. So uh, we're gonna use a bound. So if we template our zombies, you can see. Uh, so the volume velocity will only generate in this uh, bound area, okay? Uh, uh, you don't want, like, if you create a bound right away, you can see uh, it's uh, perfectly perfectly aligned. We want to have some paddings uh, here. We want to have some paddings uh, so that if the uh, particles goes maybe here, it will still move. So if your volume velocity is exactly matched the size of your model, uh, if the particle is here, then it's it's gonna stop. Okay, so we want some uh, the bound is uh, uh, a little bigger than the model. So we use a uh, create a volume here. Uh, make sure change the here to vector because it's our velocity field. And the volume uh, here. The size of our volume is uh, is matching the bound area here, okay? And you can see it create a velocity x, velocity y, velocity z. And we can use a volume VOP to calculate the velocity field. So here we're going to create a VDB from polygons here. So if we, uh, you can play around the voxel size here. So this is the VDB of our model, and we plug it into the second uh, uh, second input in the volume bar. So what VDB is is uh, it create a surface uh, of the voxel around the model surface. So uh, let's say uh, so the surface here is zero, and the outwards here is a uh, positive value and the inside here is the negative value. So uh, these voxels are created uh, at the zero values uh, here. So that's how the VDB works. And so if we plug into the volume VOP, so the volume will find these zero values here and they will generate a volume uh, velocity around the surface of the model. Okay. so. Uh, if we unplug that, uh, it's just the normal way you create a noise. So it's the position here, 
you can just create a position uh, uh, here and bind to the velocity, but it's the static noise here. Okay, so if you want move, you want to create a vector uh, four. So vector four is the position. Position is a vector three and uh, plus the time. So the time with uh, when you screw up the timeline, uh, the time value will uh, change. So now you plug that in. It's a uh, vector four. So when you play it, it's moving. Okay. So if we unplug only the position, if you play, it's not moving. So yeah. So you can also uh, multiply maybe uh, multiply some value here to change the speed of the uh, the noise so but I'm not gonna do that okay and finally you bind it to the velocity uh, the velocity is the vector so now the volume has the velocity uh, with noise uh, before it's a unif uniform uh, velocity. Now it's got some noise on it. And also we want to connect that to SDF. What that is the input second. Second input is our uh, VDB from Polygon here. So if we plug that into the SDF here. So the SDF is the collision SDF. So the volume knows this part is uh, where he want to uh, generate the volume velocity as well with the noise we applied. So uh, if we visualize this, you can create a, a volume slice. So volume slice, you can choose X, Y, Y, Z, or uh, Z, X. So just X, Y and volume trail, make sure the first input is here. Uh, I mean, second input is the volume VOP and first input is come from the volume slice. And you can visualize. Now you can see uh, this part are still noise, uh, current noise, and this part you can see it's different. Okay. So you can uh, change the trail lens here. You can see our uh, model here. And if we adjust the VDB from polygons, the voxel size here. You can see, you can change the influence on the on here. So I'm using the point one here. I think it's good. And also, uh, if you change this to YZ, you can also see the side view of your noise. Uh, if you want to see the uh, 3D view, you can scatter point in the volume. Uh, see uh, you can you can let's say uh, create a VDB from polygon VDB from polygon in a bound uh, let's see okay, I think it's good change to density scatter points and uh, use that to the volume trail so now it's the 3d view so you can see in every angle so if you change this and you can see now you can see this in 3d okay if you're using volume slice it's a uh, 2d okay so uh, but this is not the velocity, so don't just put this in, plug into a particle simulation. Uh, this will not work. So the velocity is coming from the volume up here. This is just for you to visualize the uh, visualize the velocity here. Uh, this is for you visualize. This is the actual actual uh, velocity. So plug the volume velocity here, and also you can uh, blur your velocity here. Uh, just use the volume blur, but I think it's good enough, so I disable this. So if you plug that, it will not work because if you see the here, there's no velocity attribute here. I mean the velocity volume here. So here we got volumes. So plug that into the particles. 
uh, so that's what this do okay and uh, we can also create some noise on the model so if we see here uh, the polygon is uh, is not enough so we, we remesh it and uh, so the polygon are even distributed here and uh, we create a noise so the particle will emit from the white uh, white color here the black color will not emit particles uh, so it's just a noise a noise and uh, make sure it's 1d so it's black and white you can remap uh, play around with it and uh, then we can go to the pop network so make sure you uh, the emission attribute is cd so it will emit from the white area okay so only the white area uh, have these particles and use first context geometry uh, burst you can close this uh, only one of them will uh, work i think so uh, this will generate every second so so in 24 frames it will generate this amount of the uh, particle i think this is generate every frame so if you turn this to one and maybe here so every frame it will generate this amount uh, particles okay so yeah so and you can play around the life expectancy so one plus minus 0 0.5 here so i think that's all from the pop sauce so now we want to use the pop advec by volumes so we're going to use the second context geometry, which is our uh, volume valve here. So you can, the velocity here, you can adjust the velocity scale. The default is uh, too much, so you just reduce it. You can use the update position, update force, and you can play around to see which one is better. So yeah, I think that's basically it. So if we play it, you can see the particle are flowing around the bodies. Uh, one thing you're gonna notice is uh, 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 around his uh, foot here. You can see these particles are a little bit uh, are connected. So we're gonna uh, solve that later. And that's because our uh, volume velocity is not precise enough. So they kind of have uh, connect this in the in here so yeah but we're gonna solve this uh, when we do the point deform so the point deform here uh, the first input is the mesh deform is our t-post particles uh, the second input is our time shift uh, the original model and third input is our uh, the one that has uh, animation so with point deform so play around the radius here so it will not have this connection here so if we revert to default and play you can see uh, it's uh, connecting here because they are too close uh, so if we back to 0 0.001 now you can see uh, it's not connected here okay so now yeah you got this uh, swirly uh, particles on his uh, body uh, now we can uh, move on to fire part okay so we delete the CD attribute and put it out here and that's how you source the particles <coughs> 